Coming up on Up at Noon, the Avengers are finally getting a good video game. We've got a wish list of Nintendo Switch Joy-Con colors. And what? They're rebooting Terminator? Ugh. All that and more right now on Up at Noon Live. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Up at Noon Live. I'm Max Scoville and this is Brian Altano. Yeah, that's right. That's guess, my name. Guess who writes those, those blurbs at the beginning there? Not us. Blair. That's why they say awful stuff like, I can't wait for this franchise to get terminated. Get it? Because that's the name of the franchise. We didn't write that one. We have much worse jokes coming up over the next hour. That's true. Uh, Up at Noon is a weekly comedy variety stupidity show we do here at IGN. It's full of love and passion and fun. It's all about all the things that we really are, that we care about. But uh, you can watch the show on IGN, on YouTube, on Twitch, on Roku, uh, Facebook, Apple TV, all those other things. Before we get into it, uh, I, we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of all this. Max and I have had an absolutely terrible four minutes. Uh, I got a new coffee grinder at work. Yeah, tweet, tweet your questions up at noon. We can talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and this is a French press, and I, I am a big connoisseur of coffee, so is Max. Thanks for the close-up there. It's great yeah. to see what the, co the coffee thing looks like up close. Coffee grinder did not do a good job of grinding the coffee, so we made some beans, and we put it in this thing, and what we have now is I like how, just yeah. cups of these trash. This coffee sucks. It's, it's really, really, really awful. But also, I love that we're like, hey, welcome to this show that where we clearly know what we're talking about. Like, have this, this lovely French press framed by, like, a Rancor toy and, like, a Batmobile and just a bunch of dumb children. Like, I feel like we probably made coffee like the Rugrats do. Yeah. I know we didn't. This is, like, the worst coffee, though. No, I think if we made coffee in the woods using old river water and a rock to stomp out of beans and the beans were just acorns, I think it would be better than I have, this coffee. I have, like, I have literally drank from creeks that tasted better than this coffee. Anyway, what does taste good is Wendy's. And for a limited time only, you can get the double stack. It's four for four at Wendy's. There are sponsors this month, so thank you so much to them. Yeah. For putting those delicious cheeseburgers behind us. Things I can't eat. It's a picture. I might just eat the TV. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm very no, Brian's been doing this like stupid, like just this hoop jumping diet where you gotta just like I offered you gum the other day and you were like, you gave me like the saddest look and you're like, I can't have that. It's got sugars in it. No, it no doesn't. Pro no processed food. There's yes, no sugar in gum. Yes, there is. Okay, there's probably some sugar. It's gum. You don't even eat it all. Anyway. What a man should do to clean his teeth is you go out into the wild and you get some old mints, some mint leaves off the floor, and you gnaw it like a, like a sick horse. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, this is going to be a great show. You can use the hashtag up at noon to <laughs> tell us how wrong we us. are about gum. Uh, interact with us throughout the show, uh, and we're going to have a good time. We had some awesome breaking news happen this yeah. morning. Yeah. Uh, we got a teaser trailer for the new sort of Marvel Square Enix partnership. Now, both of these guys were independently tweeting yesterday that they had a big announcement today. Turns out they were joining forces. We had some sort of theories that maybe this meant we were going to get Marvel characters in Kingdom Hearts, uh, yeah. which is a guess I made a very long time ago. I think ago. that still is a pretty safe bet. Yeah. But uh, what they basically announced is that there's going to be a new Avengers game that's going to be developed by uh, Eidos Montreal and mm -hmm. Crystal Dynamics, the guys who did Deus Ex and uh, Tomb Raider, respectively. Unfortunately, we don't have any more news about this project. It's called, literally called the Avengers Project. Uh, they gave us the new hashtag to use, which is reassemble. So maybe there's some kind of a, a Avengers disassembled kind of thing going on. Right. Uh, but basically they said that we're going to have to wait until 2018 to find out more. So not even like, stay tuned for E3, but like a, hey, we'll let you know more stuff in the near future. Totally. Um, but yeah, right now we've got, um, let's see, uh, Insomniac is doing a Spider-Man game for, yeah. for PlayStation, which I'm really excited about. Uh, Telltale is doing Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. We've got Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, I we think? got Warner Brothers making the Lego Marvel game. So this is the yeah. teaser we got this morning. I believe it was narrated by Scarlett Johansson. Was it? It sounded okay. like it. Interesting. Uh, so Crystal Dynamics is working on this, which is awesome, because you know them from Tomb Raider. Uh, we were sort of wondering where this would fall. Is this going to be sort of in the Tomb Raider engine? Is this going to be more like a Final Fantasy game? Um, a Final Fantasy game sort of lends itself to that, because yeah. you are in a team. I mean, think about like yeah. the way Final Fantasy XV rolled out, where you That's... have a bunch of guys hanging out in a car. Yeah, when you think Square Enix, you think of games where you play as more than one person. I mean, Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts come to mind. Uh, those, of course, are not the studio that you know are attached to this, though. right? So like, I don't think it's going to be, you know, I don't. I'm always curious with like a big publisher that has studios working kind of together underneath a, a big roof. Mm -hmm. uh, how much, how much they share, how much they kind of do their own thing. Um, but yeah, like typically, uh, you know, Idos Montreal and, and Crystal Dynamics, they, they're known for making single player games where you play as one character. You're not like jumping around between yeah. a group of them. But like the the nearest kind of straw we can grasp at as far as a Square Enix game where you play as multiple characters is. Uh, Final Fantasy. Yeah. So now we know about that. Uh, we know this is a multi-game partnership. 
So think about what Square Enix does, what Crystal Dyn Dynamics does, that whole studio, them coming together. Um, so we've got uh, stuff like Deus Ex. Sure. We've got stuff like Tomb Raider. We've got Final Fantasy are the big ones. But there's also the Go games, which are uh, on consoles now. They're on iPhones and stuff like that. So I'm wondering is if part of that multi-partnership deal, we might get like Deadpool Go or Avengers Go. Yeah. I, I have a feeling we'll see stuff like that. So it's really exciting. Um, it sounds like the first one's not coming until 2018, which or is... Or much later. Or I much mean, later, they yeah. said more information coming in 2018. Yeah. Um, I'm very skeptical about this. For a second, Ubisoft was making a, an Avengers game that was all in first person, I think. Uh, and that was like... It's it's a hard thing to... It's a hard kind of game to balance because, like, obviously you have to make... You don't have to make one character who plays well. You have to make a bunch of them. And, you know, uh, you know characters like like Batman or, or Wolverine, they kind of have the, the, to their benefit. They're just they're one person who has one skill set. But in the Avengers, you've got, you know, you've got Hawkeye doing archery. You've got the Hulk being super strong. Yep. You've got Iron Man who flies yep. and shoots rockets. And, like, uh, so far, I think the, the Lego games are the ones who've kind of nailed it best because everything is kind of, like, pared down. And nobody's going to be like, ah, oh, it's it's the mechanics are goofy. They're Of course they're goofy. They're little Lego guys. Yeah, I but think if they... you're making, like, a big, like, proper AAA yep. entry... And they control like you know little Lego characters or Disney Infinities or whatever. Like it's it's gonna leave a I lot to be desired. Be bummed so. out. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think the the Lego games do a fantastic job of sort of uh, inclusion. Like every single character is there. Uh, all of their moves are there. They're kind of just boiled down a little bit, right? Yeah. Like sort of signature attributes of each character is there. Um, if you're trying to do like a, a bigger game, if you look at something like Tomb Raider, right, or Deus Ex, these are like mildly open world-ish games, yeah. right? Like they're sort of like they funnel you through sections and they open up and they mm -hmm. close again. Uh, so I think something like that could work. Now, the main thing here, though, is that there are, like, a whole bunch of characters in the Avengers, and there's one guy in Deus Ex, and there's one person in, right. in Tomb Raider. Like, how will this work? So, I mean, we'll, we'll be able to, like, switch between areas, like, with different characters. Yeah. Like, will you get to play as the Hulk for a little while and then switch over to Thor? That would make sense. It's also kind of... I feel like where we're at in game design right now, uh, open world stuff and, and large scale things are, are so common uh, that to give something kind of more like, you know, more shrunken down almost doesn't work with the Avengers. You know, like they're yeah. they're trotting around the globe and they're having these massive fights and these like, you know, like the fact that Iron Man can go and just fly around, mm -hmm. or Thor can go to like other planets and stuff, or the Hulk can just you know leap far away. It's going to be really hard to kind of to find that balance and find like right. a, a way that you can both play as these characters in this kind of smaller space. Uh, but you know, make it feel fun and make it feel like a, a bigger, a bigger world. Yeah, I guess that's the main that's the main sort of priority here is to figure out. I mean, are they making something that's going to be based on one Avenger or all? Because things need to scale. Mm -hmm. I mean, quite specifically for somebody like Ant Man, like if you have Black Widow run through a hallway, she's going to fight a little differently than the guy that can burst through the ceiling. Sure. So um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Also, uh, by the time this is kind of coming out, we're going to have almost a different Avengers lineup. Yeah. You know, they keep adding more and more each Marvel movie that comes along. So. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what this is. Uh, I'm curious if we see more at uh, at E3. I mm -hmm. don't know if we will, but uh, you know, at the very least, it's it's nice to know that a good studio is attached to this. So that's uh, that's good stuff. Yeah, it means um, we're finally getting a bunch of Marvel video games, which is really yeah, cool. Comic yeah. book video games in general. I mean, I, that, I like it. Uh, if you look at somebody like Batman, like he's yeah. had he's had his time to shine for a long time now. Uh -huh. uh, and I think it's it's Marvel's turn to sort of well, get some awesome games out there. Yeah, like I'm primarily a Marvel kid, uh, and it, I love games, and um, it. It's kind of sucked to see like like DC mopping the floor. Like I love the Arkham games, and Justice is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, Marvel, aside from Marvel versus Capcom and like the Lego games, has kind of been trailing behind there. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see them finally kind of catching up there. Uh, but still, you know, uh, they do have catching up to do. Uh, and on that note, I figure we could throw out some uh, some kind of wish list ideas of partnerships between yeah. studios and you know Marvel properties. And it, you know, it's it's nice also because uh, the fact that Marvel is kind of scattering uh, their licenses across different studios. It's not just like what EA and Star Wars have done, where it's like it's EA. Making yeah. Star Wars. So let's know? talk about a few Marvel video games that the world needs right now. Yeah. Now, I think you just sort of uh, alluded to this thing, which is very important. Uh, Square Enix deal that was announced uh, recently was is not an exclusivity deal. Mm -hmm. There are studios all over the world working on Marvel stuff right now. So uh, let's go. Let's go through a few some of our favorite characters, some of the games we'd want to see, and. Most importantly, who we think should make them. Sure. Uh, so, so what one do you think the, we should start with? Uh, probably, I think one of the most satisfying uh, comic book-based Marvel games that we got recently was uh, was Deadpool, which yeah. was developed by High Moon Studios. Uh, that was a, that was when Activision had the rights, and I feel like they kind of just they if that had stayed in the oven for a little bit longer, it would have been an incredible game. It was still fun. It's still like a good junk food game, but it definitely wasn't as much as it could have been. Uh, the studio that picked up uh, High Moon's other big property, which was Transformers, 
Platinum Games made Transformers Devastation, which was fantastic, had a gorgeous right. cell shaded look. I don't see any reason why they couldn't take Deadpool and go completely over the top. I would love to see Deadpool meets like Metal Gear Rising Revengeance or Bayonetta. Uh, I mean, Deadpool uses swords and guns and he jumps around and he's very kind of combo based. And he's also not really known for sticking too close to reality. Uh, and neither is Platinum Games. They have talking robot dogs and yep. God I knows what. I love that because uh, there's a sort of level of ridiculousness that yeah. I think they embrace really, really well. Um, now, Platinum Games is a little hit or miss. We do see some of their games go in a direction that maybe, uh, if you look at something like Ninja Turtles, sure. Um, I think there's like a good and a bad Platinum. Uh, but there's opportunity for this. I mean, the scale bound devs yeah. just kind of got freed up on a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see where this can go. I, it'd be really interesting to see if like. Sony had an exclusive thing with Spider-Man, and then Deadpool ended up on Xbox. Who knows? Mm, that'd um, be interesting. Yeah. Um, another game that came out not even recently, it's almost a decade at this point, but uh, the Wolverine game that came out, uh, I believe it's the only M-rated uh, Marvel game that exists right. there. And it was, that was, I forget what devs did that, uh, but it was kind of, it kind of played like God of War, but with Wolverine. It had a lot of good ideas. Yeah, I would love to see Monolith take Wolverine and basically make... Shadow of Mordor, but you know, Shadow yeah. Shadow of Weapon X, pretty much. Because that'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, they proved that they could do this kind of almost. That was like a small open world game, and it took uh, you know a, a franchise with tons and tons of deep lore, Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings, and uh, you know they added you know magic and powers, and they made it a fun video game, but it also didn't completely upset the apple cart in terms of uh, kind of the lore and, and sure. canon they're dealing with. So Wolverine, you know, climbing around and. Uh, you know, jumping down on... And the Nemesis yeah. system. Yeah, like, having badass. something like that. Which is like, when that game first came out, when Mortar first came out, we were like, here's all the games that should use it, all these games are going to take advantage of it now, and no one's really done anything mm -hmm. with it. So uh, I think, like, him running around the sort of, like, Canadian wilderness, um, oh, getting into in fights with, like, feds and cops yeah. and mutants, like... Or send him to, like, Madripoor, you know? Yeah. That'd be great. Um, yeah, that'd be and so again, cool. of course, we're also, we're kind of, you know, erring on the side of the, the, the wish list side of things because, you know, Wolverine is still... Uh, Fox more than Marvel, so yep. I don't know where that lies. Um, now, Spider-Man uh, yeah. is being developed by Insomniac. Everyone was thinking it was going to be Sucker Punch because they have that uh, pedigree of doing the Insomniac games, or not Insomniac, Infamous games, yeah. uh, which are pretty much, you know, they're superhero games. You yeah, jump around right. a city. And you, uh, it but they're also super villain games. Yeah, which is why I really there's like that them. morality system. You, yeah, you have that option to play them as evil, uh, which is how I played uh, Infamous my the, the third one, my second time around. Yeah. Um, really fun, really gorgeous game that sort of just like let you fly around a city. So why not take that and couple it with somebody like Venom? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Venom is awesome. Venom is part of the sort of my favorite, one of my favorite, just very hokey, very stupid comic book arcs ever, which is Maximum Carnage, where Carnage, Venom, and Spider-Man are just in this gigantic war all over New York City. Mm -hmm. All of their weird, gross, like, Space juice is getting all up in everybody, just, and it looks like a Gushers commercial. Yeah. It's just real gross. So, and I love the idea of how fast and how quickly these characters can scale up a building, their powers, their ability to just sort of, for, sort of flip cop cars. Uh, in Infamous, you do see things like sort of digging into the ground and spikes coming up, mm -hmm. and doing all of that with alien symbiote powers would be totally awesome. Yeah, Carnage is like the kind of thing, a kind of character that like you could never animate. A long time ago, like there's just no good way to do it on, say, something like the Dreamcast mm -hmm. or the N64. But nowadays, everything's nowadays all gooey, can, disgusting. Yeah. I mean, we got we got um, uh, Prototype, which yeah. is effectively an alien symbiote game. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, you know, Sucker Punch would be would be fantastic at this, specifically because of the morality system. Because Venom has always been kind of a he's a lethal enforcer. He's a, yep. he's like Spider Man, but he kills people. He's sort of a good bad guy, anti hero. Um, that said, these are all kind of like the dark, grittier characters in Marvel. But there's a lot of different you know uh, range to Marvel superheroes. Uh, one character who's kind of become weirdly popular in recent years uh, for quirky reasons is Squirrel Girl, who can talk to squirrels. Why is that a thing? I don't know, but it's great. Um, I would love to see a sillier studio like Double Fine play with that. I think Double Fine typically doesn't do much in the way of uh, licensed games, yeah. but uh, how cool would it be to like see like a cute little kind of point and click adventure game where you're like, you know, fighting crime and fighting like D-list Marvel villains with squirrels. Sure, or even going fun. with the sort of Psychonauts platform action platform. Yeah, that'd type be great. Of, type of notion. That'd be really cool. I like yeah. that idea a lot. I mean, it's cool to see like the big kind of the the, the A-list Marvel Marvel heroes uh, you know, be like, "Oh, this is going to we're going to pair the guys who make Tomb Raider with, you know, the Avengers." These are like the biggest things in the world, but like let's take kind of smaller weirder stuff like, yeah. you know, this would be really interesting to see that. I mean, I think that Telltale and Guardians of the Galaxy are kind of kind of made for each other in that sense. Um, on that note, another one, a character who's kind of become uh, more popular recently is uh, Miss Marvel, the Kamala Khan version. Uh, I would love to see the guys who did uh, Life is Strange, uh, Don't Nod, play with that. Uh, they also, That's of course, great. did Remember Me, which is an action game, and now they're currently working on Vampire, which is like all about the choices you make. 
Uh, but they've proven that they can make um, they can make kind of a story based game, and they can also make an you know an action game where you're doing kind of more uh, you know bizarre stuff. But as far as the basic like here's a story about a teenage girl with superpowers, they've kind of proven they could do that, and Miss Marvel would be fantastic for that. But you know, in the meantime, if you want a Miss Marvel game, you can always just go on Tumblr.com. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I love those, man. I, I really wish we would get all these games. Yeah. Uh, we actually got a tweet from Gonzo7792. That's Eddie Brock on Twitter, ironically. And he says, uh, Punisher game made by IO Interactive. I would actually really like oh, that. Oh, man. So, like that, that's just a like, Hitman game where you just get loud. To get into it real quick, you and I, neither you nor I are like huge fans of the Punisher as a character. I think he's just sort of like just this gruff, angry dude. Mm-hmm. But that's the way most video games work. So I think he'd be kind of perfect for that. Yeah, Punisher um, makes sense as a first-person shooter. Totally. Straight up. Yeah. Um, what about what about the uh, arcane guys doing a Daredevil game? Oh, dude. Like that's where you're awesome. just doing ninja stuff, but it's like dishonored, you know? You yeah. Can, you know. Use the hashtag up at noon. Tweet us your uh, your Marvel video game studio pair ups. I really like that one. That'd be awesome. Yeah. What do you think Nintendo would do? Uh, I don't I don't know, man. That's a tough one, yeah, right? I don't think Nintendo and Marvel are going to mash up anytime soon. Oh, be so nice. It's kind of a weird stretch. Maybe, what if imagine. they did like Marvel Land, like Nintendo Land, and you could go on rides? I don't know how I feel about that. It's kind of strange. Yeah. Um, now, well, of course, the, the big thing on the, on the horizon right now is uh, the Nintendo Switch. There's yeah. a new Nintendo console coming out in like a matter of weeks, yeah, it's which like is five weeks from now. Kind of bonkers. And like we both we both pre-ordered one, and mm-hmm. I feel like we're kind of at this weird like kind of this lull of like what to expect. The launch lineup is kind of lame. We talked about that last year or last last year last week. Uh, but that said, it's like it's still a shiny new toy, yeah. and I'm excited to play with it. And so far, we've seen uh, the Joy Cons, the funny little controllers, which we inevitably will wind up uh, needing to buy more of because yes. they're Nintendo controllers. The, uh, the Pro Controller just went on sale yesterday. It sold yeah. out in like 15 minutes on Amazon. I was lucky enough to get one, even though I don't need it. But I'm doing that thing now where I'm yeah. like, I'm just getting caught up. Sure, in the sure, yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, we've got the kind of the weird orange and blue uh, controllers, and the, the interesting thing is they're doing a lot of. Uh, well, not a lot of. They're doing an instance of asymmetrical controllers because they're yeah. meant to be split up so you can tell them apart. And you'd be like, it's like a oh, baby, baby you're on the orange one. Pink, um, and you can buy them piecemeal. You can buy them in sets individually. Yeah. On uh, My Nintendo on Japan, you can actually customize what you want on the left, what you want on the right. Really? Which I really wish they how many How many studio. colors do they have? Is it just... Just those two in gray. Oh, but So you can do like gray weird. and pink, pink and gray, uh, blue and pink. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, Nintendo is not shy about getting like weird, silly colors. Like, I mean... I feel like Sony and Microsoft, they'll be like, oh, it's the Halo edition or the Call of Duty edition. But like, yep. Microsoft or Nintendo is just like, hey, here's a, here's a DS that's got uh, Pikachu on it. Oh, it's got Animal Crossing all over it. So uh, Nintendo is known for doing wacky kind of hardware variations with funny color schemes. And I'm getting excited at the thought of what we're going to see with the Switch Joy-Cons kind of down the road. Right. Uh, so I did some mock-ups of like kind of custom color schemes I would love to see, special edition type things. Uh, and I, I don't think they're too far fetched, and I think they could no, be great. Let's take a look. Um, obviously, the Nintendo Classic is a, the NES Classic oh, was a damn. huge was a huge hit. Everyone was really mad they couldn't buy one. Um, we've seen uh, we've seen hardware that looks like the NES before. There was, I believe, a Game Boy Micro. There was the uh, uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Mm-hmm. Uh, this would be so cool, you know, just to just to even see kind of like a hall of fame of controller styles that are kind of reinterpreted by. Uh, by the Joy Cons. Yeah, I really um, love that, especially because this thing uses little cartridges again. So that's, yeah. that's super cute. Also, you're going to be taking it with you places. So like, it's one thing to have controllers around your house that you're like, well, I see these. My friend sees these. Maybe I can tell them apart. But it's also like to have it as like a fashion item on the bus. Like it's, a, like it's a DS. important to note with all of these that the Joy Cons are things that you can pop on and off individually and purchase individually right now. So that's the thing of like the difference between being like, oh, they made a new Zelda 3DS that's going to cost me two hundred fifty dollars, uh, or I can just buy these new Joy Cons for seventy yeah. bucks and slip them on the side. Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, old men like you and yes. me, to a lesser extent, are nostalgic for the classic NES era, the old 1985 kind of red and gray stuff, but there's an entire other generation who has a much fonder feeling for the Atomic Purple era, which, right. of course, was the N64, the Game Boy Color. Uh, the 90s. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the Game Boy Advance. Basically, they had that weird, like, Nintendo was just like, hey, what about see-through purple? Who's done that? Nobody? Okay, we'll do that. So I would love to see an Atomic Purple lineup. I, I think I saw a, a much better uh, Photoshop somebody did uh, that was making the Switch look like a GameCube with that kind of darker purple. But uh, yeah, I just I miss that that wonderful era in the 90s where Nintendo was just like, hey, you got a Game Boy yet? Yeah? Well, you want another one that comes in one of five different colors? Yeah, I love that. And did you go with like a vaguely transparent? Uh, yeah, sort yeah. Of I, want to, I wanted to see. I'd like, it if, I'd like it if they put. I love that. If they put fake microchips inside to make the guts look more exciting. Because yeah, I feel like I, they're probably as not. As Tony that Hawk would say, those things are full of technology. And I really want to know just a little bit of what's going on in there. Because there's, there's like uh, NFC readers, there's uh, yeah. motion detectors, there's like some. Uh, 
there's there's uh, HD Rumble 40. Yeah, tri yeah, all this. Crazy no, that was stuff, the whole so. thing in the 90s is seeing inside your electronics, and I feel like now it's kind of like it's over. Like I'd love if I could see inside what's in my iPhone. I don't know what's in there. What's Drop, in there? If you keep Tell dropping me. it. Yeah, that's a good way to find out. Just drop your phone enough, and you can see inside there. So what else you got, uh, Max? Anyway, uh, here's oh, an obvious one. Uh, Mario and Luigi. Uh, they they hang out all the time. They're good yep. friends. Uh, they're. I mean, this makes a ton of sense. This these two color schemes. Uh, I think we got one more after this, but I, this this seems like this seems like such a no brainer. You know, like how much does it cost Nintendo to make a red controller or a green controller and be like, hey, it's the special edition one, only available at you know GameStop or whatever. You no, know, conversely, I just thought of something. You could go with uh, you could make the joysticks yellow and make them both blue, uh, and it would look like their uh, their overalls. Yeah, just weirdly asymmetrical, like he was getting out of the shower. Yeah. Now, uh, finally, one thing I've always loved about Pokemon is how the Pokedex is a thing you have in the game. Yeah. And it's also, it's kind of almost like a weird, it's like a Game Boy, kind of. Uh, and the Switch is a thing you're going to be taking on the road. And, uh, you know, the Pokemon company's always been weird about how Pokemon is a, it's a portable it's a portable series. It's not meant to be a, a console game. But the Switch is like, hey, it's portable, too. So hopefully we see more Pokemon stuff on the Switch. And on that note, I would love to see a Pokemon-themed uh, Switch setup. Like, oh, that's Just make cool. it look like a Pokedex, Pokedex Pokeball Um you know, you could even get weird, have like the whole great ball, master ball thing going on. So. Oh yeah, or go like uh, horizontal with like the white and red. Yeah. yeah, this is awesome, man. I think I really do think we're gonna start seeing stuff like this. I think they're gonna be limited edition. I think you'll be able to import some from Japan, I believe. I mean, they they said that it's basically region free, right? So we know that for games. I hope hardware works exactly the same thing. I think yeah. I think it will. That'll be good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, on that note, uh, Breath of the Wild. Do we have that statue floating around here no, somewhere? Do we forget it? I forgot it. it? Okay. Just run let's, come, let's come back to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll come, come back, back to that. that. We got a cool uh, uh, action figure. Not an action figure. Statue. Mm -hmm. um, teleprompter. Just There we go. That's the one. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, so the big thing that came out this week is Resident Evil 7. Yeah. Uh, it's always kind of funny when a, a game series is churning out that many games, and you're like, oh, seven. That's a, that's a lot of games. Uh, and frequently at that number, you're like, this isn't a great thing. But in this yeah. case, it sounds like Resident Evil 7 is like the really, it's, it's a return to form. And people it's, are... It's simultaneously, I feel, like a return to form and a step in a brand new direction for the franchise. That it, I, I believe after 6, most would agree, uh, it desperately, desperately needed. Right. So um, it is a good time to even launch a game like this, by the way. Like, we, I feel like so many games... We're coming out towards the end of the year. Even stuff like Last Guardian, which came out like early December, um, we were just starting to get fatigued and mm -hmm. overwhelmed with the amount of games. And then things opened up a little bit for 2017, and Resident Evil 7 is kind of the first big, big game. I expect we're going to see this chart very high yeah. on the MPD. Yeah, it's it's d doing well. I mean, people yep. know what Resident Evil is, and hearing that it's actually like a scary thing again is, yeah. is good news. Um, but more importantly, uh, it's reviewing really, really well. Yeah. So um, we're going to run through some of the more notable reviews review quotes, uh, it, obviously from the top of the spectrum to lower and lower and lower, but um, even even IGM, which gave it a 7.7, .7, that's very good on our scale. Uh, so uh, let's let's get into it. Guardian gave it a perfect score, uh, or the highest score they can give it. It's yeah. a, a masterclass, breezily new, yet quintessentially in character with its illustrious forebearers. And I want to point something out about this game that I'm, I'm finding more and more as I'm connecting with it. If you play the first hour or so of this game, you're probably like, oh, this feels kind of like Outlast or something like that. Like, it's another first-person survival horror game. Uh, but then you start interacting with guns and weapons, uh -huh. and there's item combinations. And you go to open your first door that has a very obtuse, like, animal head logo on uh -huh. it. And you're like, this is Resident Evil. It took a while to sort of, sort of prove that to me, but it's totally Resident Evil. You uh, said you said something I really loved about it, uh, how basically uh, the original Resident Evil games, they were you're in this mansion where it's a, supposedly a bunch of rich scientists who are secretly yeah. doing bad, evil things. Yep. And it doesn't really explain why you're doing like, oh, here's the shield key. Like, it's I guess it's sort of eccentric old architecture. Or Resident but, Evil 2 when you're in a police station. Yeah. Like, what kind of cops would set up like a key that you need like an animal's yeah. eye to open up? It's the always had the kind door. of the luda narrative dissonance of yeah. these silly puzzles. But in this case, you're in the house of a bunch of crazy backwoods rednecks and right. they're like, yeah, put the cat's head on top of the cat corpse and that'll open the door because we rigged it up that way because we're loons. Because they're crazy, paranoid like backwoods yeah. nightmare people. And like you'll get to like a, a, a the scorpion door and in the old games it would have just been like a bronze scorpion on the door. But this one has just this, this like 
fat taxidermied scorpion, and then like 20 more all hung up by little strings glued together, and you're like, so oh, gross. this is nightmare art. Yeah. Like, I love it. I want to play this game, but at the same time, I really don't. Anyway. I think you should. I think you um, should inch through it. Yeah. Uh, Destructor gave it another perfect score. They said, Resident Evil 7 went beyond, beyond my expectations, and I feel we have an instant classic here. I want to jump back in right now, and I have a feeling I'll be doing so for years to come. I was just talking about this game with Alana Pierce, who's our toy editor here at IGN. Uh, she also totally adores it, and what we're finding is that some of us are having completely different experiences in the way some of the sort of more stalkery characters mm -hmm. approach you or uh, or don't approach you. Uh, Marty and Alana played through the game a little bit on the live stream for IGN the other day and were stalked by this character named Jack. Uh, and then she went and played it again and the guy didn't show up at all. So my experiences with it going left in one room and finding him there and going in a different way and not seeing him at all are different than what other people are having. So I think there's a random element to it. which That's the is coolest gonna, thing in the world. Yeah, I love that. Totally inspire multiple playthroughs. And if you're an old school Resident Evil fan like me, you know that the original Resident Evil, which again happened with Remake, rewarded you for beating the game faster and faster and with certain sort of priorities in check. If you beat it in under three hours, you got like an infinite rocket launcher and stuff like that. So I really hope stuff like that comes back. It'd be cool to run around this house with an infinite rocket launcher. Yeah, that'd be that'd even the odds. Uh, EGM um, gave it a 95. They said this is easily the best Resident Evil game in years. It masterfully blends Eastern and Western horror sensibilities into a truly terrifying package that also harkens back to the series' roots. This is an actual legit scary game. Uh, there's some of you probably in the comments being like, I'm not scared of anything. Dude, you're tough. Good for you. Uh, work out in a mirror like the kid in Little Giants because you did it. Uh, I'm scared of this game. All right. It's a scary-ass game, but I love playing it because yeah. it gives me some sort of feeling. Yeah. Um, those old curmudgeons at Polygon said, it's hard to know if Resident Evil 7 will stand the test of time as much as classics like the original or RE4. Taken on its own, however, it's an excellent game that pushes the series in worthy new directions. They give it a 9 out of 10. Yep. That's, uh, yeah, this is, this, is all, this is all good buzz here. Yeah. New um, directions is a good thing. Uh, like I said, New Direction sounds like a rehab. It's a, I think it's a, a 90s R&B group. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Game Informer gave it an 8.5 or 85. I don't even know how they do these things. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This new vision doesn't reach the same heights of, height, heights of spectacle and gameplay innovation as that breakthrough release, but, you know, comparing it to Resident Evil 4, but right. it's a welcome addition to the series, both in terms of gameplay and lore, and a nice entry point for newcomers. That is always a key thing with a series as kind of long and storied as, as uh, Resident Evil, mm -hmm. or Final Fantasy, or Metal Gear, is having a jumping on point, you know? Yeah. Where do you start? Because the games theoretically keep getting better as they make more of them, you know, technologically. But story-wise, stuff just piles up. I think it's like it, yeah. if you if you jumped into Resident Evil Five or Six and it was your first Resident Evil game, it's completely insane. It's nonsensical, illogical, just lunacy. Basically. You know, what'd be really cool is if they took this approach to Resident Evil and basically remade one of the other ones, but in an entirely different perspective with different puzzles and everything. Right. But just, I mean, just changing the perspective that much would so, be nuts. So, uh, quick tangent, but a guy on YouTube, and I don't have his name in front of me, but he actually modded Resident Evil Remake for GameCube to be entirely first person. Huh. Which is insane because it, that game has pre-rendered backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what's what do we got next here? Uh, uh, Giant Bomb says, Resident Evil 7 features just the right amount of modern twists mixed into the traditional formula. May not reach the same heights as the industry changer like Resident Evil 4. Uh, that's a very high bar. Like, a top three game for me, but it certainly ranks among the best entries uh, in in the series. So I think that like that idea of like new ideas and and sort of classic horror and not coming together in like a weird tropey way is what's really helping this game. Yeah. Like, the tropes that this game leans on are stuff like Texas Chainsaw Massacre rather than like I don't know like Insidious or like any of this sort of like there are just a lot of we've had a big resurgence in horror movies mm -hmm. in the last few years and a lot of the sort of like. I don't know, little kids' toys and like the voodoo dolls, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's very hokey. So this is a little more grounded, even though it's made of weird mold mud people. Good stuff. Uh, and then finally, uh, yeah, IGN, that's us. Uh, our pal Chloe Rad reviewed yep. it, gave it a 7.7, .7, which apparently is uh, the equivalent of hating a game, according to the internet. Uh, Not true. She still really liked it. She said, uh, it's also the closest numbered sequel has come to recapturing Resident Evil's slow but thrilling and atmospheric adventure game. Yep. Roots for a while, a welcome return. I truly hope to see more of in the future. Um, and yeah. that's the thing. I think, I think when we do see Resident Evil 8 now, and this is what I hope going forward, right? Uh, this, this game is a triumph. It's a victory. Capcom nailed it. Uh, I want this to, I want them, the lessons that they take from this, I want them to take into the future and in a well-balanced way because I don't want the characters in this game to return to the next game with cybernetic eyes and you're punching boulders and like 
get Wesker's in the basement again, and like the jump, the shark, like almost practically literal shark jumping nonsense that happened by halfway through the Resident Evil franchise the last time around. I hope we get away from that. Yeah. If Resident Evil now represents a guy goes into a house and has to survive it, uh, there are so many good ways to do that without it all sort of connecting back to the T virus, G virus, lore of Umbrella, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, yeah kudos to Capcom. I love this game. I can't stop thinking about it. I can't wait to play more. And uh, I hope they make a sequel pretty soon. Yeah. On that note, uh, another game that came out this week is Yakuza 0, which is another long-running series. And this one is sort of a prequel set in the 80s. And it wouldn't be the 80s without disco dancing. Let's what? take a look. Max and Brian here. We are playing the latest hard-boiled entry in the, the badass crime saga, Yakuza. This is Yakuza Zero, uh -huh. and it wouldn't be organized crime without disco dancing. What? What yeah. is this? You can uh, you can do a disco dancing. Contest. Queen of Passion. Yeah. I'm gonna make her mine. You wanna do that one? Yeah, let's do the Queen of Passion. What other okay. songs do they have? They also have uh, the hit single from pop star Prince, Miracle Johnson. Uh, yes. Is that, that it? Just those two songs? And then there's I Want to Take You Home, an 80s rock classic. So is this like karaoke? No, it's dancing. Coin, no disco. Do this. Let's do this. Okay. One. Okay. So Normal. I don't know about that. Yeah. So here's the disco dancing. Are we having a dance off? Yeah, we're going to Ooh, look at that. Contest. Crotch. Yeah. A lot of crotching. So this, of course, is set in 1988 uh, in Tokyo, and it's kind of a prequel to the rest of the Yakuza series. And as you can see, we are some badass crime dudes. All right, so what's going on with these ghosts? We have to go to the spot and then go to, and then it's hard. I'm what? Going bad. Why is it bad? Oh, oh, you have to press the. What, Max? I don't know how to play this game. So you're trying to get to the. I don't know what's happening. You're supposed to wait till the get to the thing and it, you're supposed to dance. Apparently, this goes hard. All right, I did a combo. Yeah. Three what? Seconds. Oh, man. I am terrible at this, yeah, Max. I, I was like, oh, it's a cool crime game. You know, I, I played some uh, crime games before. There's a lot of uh, rhythm. What is happening? I'm trying to dance. I'm not. No, it's not. It doesn't work. No, it's because you're not doing the ghost dance. Though. <laughs> I'm doing It just seems, it says bad the whole time. I think we have to get in the groove a little bit. Okay, here we go. I got it. What's gotta go to the Japanese game? Do a little disco tech. Yeah, high steps. So this is kind of like a weird D-pad based DDR kind of. Uh, yeah. No, it's I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do it. Feel the groove. Yeah, I I, I, no, I don't feel anything. What? After this. Oh, come on, man. This is hard. This is really difficult. Uh, damn it. He pushed the button the long time. This must be made for people who actually do disco dancing. You ever go disco dancing as a weekend with your wife? No, I've what? never ever done that. Why don't you go disco dancing more? Right? Because it's not 1978. Did you win? Yeah, I have more rhythm than you. How does that work? You got one eye. Well, you can still dance. Damn it. Rookie dancer. Yeah, well, I crushed anyway, you, dude. You crushed me. Apparently, I suck at dancing discos. You want to try another one? I didn't do great at all, either. Can we not play this one? Can we do darts, we do darts? or something? Let's do darts. That's okay. a dance game where you oh, throw actually, small spears oh. at stuff. I want to do bowling. All right. Oh, the little jazz. Cricket count up? Man, this is for people. I always love it when people are like, yeah, this is actually a legit darts game. So throw the thing at the thing. Incredibly dangerous to keep all those bottles up there. Look at that. You're going to throw a dart a up fun, there. A fun treat. If you hit it, you get free drinks for the whole bar. Yes. So you know what I love is is the idea of darts, but the math of darts is a thing I hate. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody counts like that. Yeah. No. No tutorial for us. We're good at darts. Yeah, we know. We're oh, okay. God. Okay. This is a throw yeah. power, aim. We'll figure All it out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're. right. I'm up. 301. Yeah. Okay. The That's big, a the just big score. Any number you want. Here I'll comes pit. me. Yikes. All right. Oh, oh all right. Oh, look at that. That's a big uh, hand. That's cheating. You can just put it right in there. Yeah. Oh, this is giant starts right here. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <gasps> what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Nice work, Max. Oh, he's a little shaky. He's had a few <clears throat> drinks. 
You're doing really good. I don't know if I am. There's a lot of rules to darts that we don't know about. Where are you trying bad. to where are you trying to go right? <laughs> that was That's a bad one. Not even close. Alright, your turn. You're up. Alright. Darts. Oh, Disco I dancing for people who can't dance. Now he how does he get how's Gorgon gonna be so great? Because he's got no eye. I'm gonna give you a little a little secret here. It's it's fake. What? It's not real. What are you trying to write your name? This dude is drunk as hell. How do you, you look at you gotta use the right stick to draw back. Oh man. Hey there. So is Sam. darts like golf and you're trying to count up or down? I forget. <laughs> Okay. I think you're supposed to get as like it's sort of like bowling. You're trying to get. Oh, what? Trying to get as close to zero as you can. That was amazing. That was a pretty good dart. Yeah. Fart. A lot of people do good good at darts. Fart. All right. Come on. Okay. You're going in there. Mm. That wasn't good. No. Okay. Mm. Oh. Oh, that was a bull. You got a bull right there, right in the bully, bull. Bullies on you. How huh. dare you? That wasn't good. Well, it looks like I'm winning. Maybe? You did, you did good, Max. All Great right. job. Remove the darts. That'd be weird if they made you go up and get them. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. You know what's a good way to practice darts <coughs> is to throw other stuff in your spare time. You know, yeah, like I, I like to go in bars at <coughs> night and just throw my shoes at the uh, Yeah, floor. shoes are good. They, treat, they teach you uh, throwing strength. Yep. Eggs. Yeah. Uh, this is boring. Yeah, this is like the world's slowest gun range. I don't like this anymore, Max. Yeah, darts are kind of like acoustic guns. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching Yakuza Zero's <laughs> weird ass mini games, yeah. such as the blind ghost dance and uh, <laughs> acoustic guns. What a weird game. What I'm are we really doing? excited to go to the maid cafe, though. What are you wearing? What is this shirt? Is this like an exercise shirt? What I'm wearing? What are we having? Phone sex? <laughs> it's like Shut a up. it's like a tight undershirt. Look it's like, at me. Is it for liftins? No, it's because it's cold out. Oh, is it like was like a thermal? Yeah, it's like a thermal. What's wrong with you? Does it have one of those like Under Armour logos on it? No, it doesn't. It's just like a shirt. All right, you don't think I'll test you about it? Anyway, yeah, that's don't ask me what I'm wearing. <laughs> what are you wearing? How dare you? What are you wearing? ASL. It's sex look. Hey, babe, you up? <laughs> oh, hold on. Anyway, y Yakuza Zero. You can dance, you can throw darts, beat up a guy in the street. It's fight, impossible to throw it at the wall. Guy. That's the game. Thank you. What the? F <laughs> <laughs>
Um, the base is actually embossed too. Do you want to pick that up real quick? Yeah, I can do that. Look at that. You can unsling his arrow. That's pretty cool. That's really awesome. Um, yeah, so yeah, just this whole area check here. It from this angle right here, it's actually sort of like embossed a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I love this thing. Uh, first four figures, just Google that. They make it right now. Just look up uh, Legends of the Breath of the Wild Link yeah. by First Four. And again, like I said, it's on Best Buy right this second. They're going fast, and then they're going to be on eBay for like three times the price uh, if any of their older stuff yeah. is uh, any indication. If anybody wants to buy this Batman Forever Batmobile. It is also ninety dollars, and you have to come and get it. It's mine. You can't sell that. I you put it on my side of the desk. It is mine now. No, you put it there. No, I did not. Anyway, it's for sale. Just come find me. Um, yeah. So uh, speaking of uh, expensive toys, mm -hmm. uh, I guess we could talk about this. Um, there is a crazy market for designer action figures. Uh, we see them here and there. There's a you know handful of toy companies that do kind of weird stuff, and usually they're you know very limited run. And it's not so much that they have a license attached to them. It's more that like some artist made them. It's kind of just like it's like buying you know like really fine prints right. or uh, you know sculptures basically. I don't actually know anybody who collects these or displays them or anything. Um, but this one caught my eye. There is a uh, artist named uh, Chogi, I think, who made these incredible. Droid figures, sort of. I don't know if that's even the right word. Uh, it's uh, R2D2 and C3PO, and they are uh, sort of, sort of like more more hip versions, I guess. Uh, and this is all like this is all handmade. Uh, these things are limited to 20 pieces. That they come as a set. You get the the tech deck R2D2 and this uh, wonderful kind of just like like party 3PO dude who's got like you know Kanye glasses and like a handmade sweatshirt. Yeah, this uh, is really cool. Incredibly detailed figures. Uh, uh, the, the shoes are the best part. The shoes are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and it's really funny because I'm like, I'm not even sure how you go about getting a license for this. Like does he have to kick like, you know, 10% of this to Lucasfilm or 50 or whatever? Is this sort of just like weird, you know, gray area bootleg stuff? Um, in any case, uh, I really, I really love this. I love what he did here. Uh, this guy will set you back $595 and that's assuming you can get your hands on one of the 20 that they're selling. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you got that kind of money kicking around, there you go. I, it's a that's a really it's a really cool 3PO figure. There's only 20 of them, so uh, act <laughs> fast. It reminds me a lot of a couple years ago, Adidas and Star Wars teamed up, and they mm -hmm. made a bunch of really awesome sort of like Star Wars inspired streetwear, yep. uh, a bunch of shoes and hoodies and track pants and stuff like that. I still have the. Uh, Rebel Luke Skywalker orange Adidas kicks that are like they, the cool thing about them is they put them on a blister card with a little like peg hook on top and everything yeah. like that. So, I love that. Yeah, and uh, we're actually experimenting with making uh, you know designer uh, art too. So this is uh, custom R two D two that I made. Yeah, uh, it's this for sale really for five thousand dollars. Yep. one of a kind, uh, unavailable anywhere else. So again, just head down to the IGN offices and uh, we accept uh, cash and Bitcoin. Can you can you stop trying to sell all of this is like a really Would sad... anyone like to buy this watch? It no. is my watch. It is a Casio. Oh, it doesn't even work. It's it works fine. It has two different date and time settings. Okay, no you know, calculator. We, we have a minute here. Let's 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 talk about something very important here that I, I don't think we've ever really addressed on this show. Max and I got a new pet for our desk. Yeah. We are uh, uh Oh boy, he's a big boy. He's okay. grown up a lot. Can we get a close up on this? Um, so Max and I, somehow we ended up with this, one of those sharks that is like this big, and you put it in water and it expands. It grows to six times its size, but we didn't find a vessel big enough, so we yeah. got it stuck in this vase. So we put it in this vase, <laughs> and this is what a shark looks like. Hold on, what does it say? Toys with Dongguan. Um, I think it's stuck. Can you it's, pull it out? No. Oh, it's coming out. It's coming out. Coming out very slowly. There I feel like go. it probably smells kind of bad. Oh, let's see. Let's but yeah, see. like, um, don't pull, don't pull it all the way. It's very, no, it's very good. sticky. Okay. Yeah. It smells good. I don't know if this is a good idea. There's going to get blue water everywhere. Give him birth. Oh, no. Oh, no. Gee, no, no. I, I want you to hear this. Hold oh, on. he's hollow. Listen. You think that's bad? <laughs> Listen to this. And that's what my shark sounds like. Also, uh, so his head's sticking out of the water. That's why he's got such a tiny. Also, like head. we all get mad about like you know Xboxes and Playstations, and we argue about which is cooler and which is better. Yep. But there was a point in time where kids were like, "What's a video game? Oh, cool! A little alligator that grows yep. to six times its side. All you do is leave it in water. It's disgusting. You can't oh, actually play with it. You also, still use at museums. Like you're supposed to learn something. Like what? That sharks get bigger when you leave them in water for a while? Side note: uh, What this, is the moral of this toy? This this conversation is auto playing on the front page of the world's biggest video game website right now. So there's that. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Don't, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, yeah. um, Max. Uh, something very tragic happened last Friday. Yeah. Uh, as many of you are aware, um, we got some news. Uh, yeah. Uh, that they're looking to reboot Terminator. They're making a new Terminator movie. So yeah. uh, this is uh, so. So this James, is <laughs> James Cameron on Friday. On Friday, uh, during the inauguration, um, uh, teamed up with current apprentice Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, to reboot the, ter the Terminator franchise. Now, yeah. um, we, we don't know exactly what this means yet. We know that uh, Tim Miller, who uh, directed Deadpool, or is directing uh, Deadpool 2, um, is going to be working on this movie. Uh, we don't know exactly how much it really means. We can tell you this. There have been five Terminator movies so far. Two and a half of them have been good. I yes. will say that half of three is good. Everything after that is bad. I so, kind of like Salvation. No. I like to look at it. No, you don't. I like it. The I like that they get that they got a flying truck. They don't even kill anybody in that movie. It's got Terminator in the title. It's a blowed up 7-Eleven. There's like three deaths in that movie, and they're all off. What about that part when he rides on a motorcycle, plays Guns N' Roses? Anyway, yeah. uh, part of the reason this is happening is James Cameron, when he directed Terminator, the first one in 1984, uh, he'd only made Piranha 2. Like, that was his only director credit. And so people yeah. were like, yeah, this guy's probably not going to go on to make, like, the five most, like, highest grossing movies of all time or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, like, no one expected that. Um, so I guess he didn't really get the rights to Terminator, even though that was kind of his, his baby. Uh, he came back to do Terminator 2, uh, but the deal is that the rights are reverting back to him after 35 years. So he finally has his name attached to it again, and the plan is to do, I believe they're calling it a reboot slash yep. conclusion, which would sound like complete insanity in any other series, but given the fact that Terminator is entirely hinges upon people basically rebooting themselves, yeah. like... That is retcon the movie. Like it is about going back and changing stuff and trying to make it okay again. I mean, Terminator Genesis or Genesis Genesis uh, was so bad it actually retroactively made some of the classic ones almost worse because it took major parts of them and looped them back around yeah. on themselves. I don't know how you. I don't know how you make this. I don't yeah. know how you make it good. Also worth noting. Uh, when James Cameron made Terminator, he had one movie under his belt, which was Piranha 2. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Miller has one movie under his belt, and it's Deadpool. So, yeah. like, I love Deadpool so much. That's uh, possibly my favorite movie from last year. But I don't know what he's capable of. I don't know if I'm going to doubt him, because, I, you know, James Cameron is a guy who, historically, if you doubt him, you are proven wrong. Right. There are people who thought Avatar was going to be a laughing stock, but... Who's laughing now? I mean, he just the put guys out a, at the bank who have to count all that money. Well, I don't. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we're all laughing at Avatar yeah. now. I don't know. I just don't know what you do with Terminator. Like, what do you do with it? I think you stay as far away from the source material as possible. Um, I, I think you just start fresh. Honestly, you just start fresh. Like all of the stuff with John Connor is dead to me. All the stuff with Sarah Connor, it's done. We've seen every angle of it. We've we've seen a TV show which we didn't mention before. Yeah. All uh, the stuff they got retcon in Genesis. I mean, all of, the the tale of John Connor needs to go away. And I love the original, and I love Terminator Two more than probably. I mean, it's probably in the top yeah. ten favorite movies. I mean, Terminator Two is is like. E arguably the best action movie ever made. Yeah. Like, it's 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 up there. It's like that or Aliens, pretty much. I, mean, I, th I think you yeah. tell a brand new story. Yeah. You start from scratch. Um, you can bring on Arnold Schwarzenegger if you absolutely need to. I, I don't know why. I honestly think that he has nothing yeah. to do with it either. Then again, it's also it's also worth pointing out that James Cameron frequently attaches himself to really cool-sounding stuff. Uh, he, for a while, was working on Battle Angel Alito, which has since been kicked over to Robert Rodriguez, right. who's supposedly developing that. Uh, he was talking about uh, overseeing, uh, what was it, um, uh, In the Mountains of Madness, the mm -hmm. uh, H.P. Lovecraft story, which was going to be done with, I think, Guillermo del Toro and, and uh, Peter Jackson. No idea what's going on with that. So it could just be he's like, hey, Tim Miller's cool with me. He's with me. He's going to make the Terminator now. Yeah. And just the fact that having his name attached to it is good news. So I don't know. I like James Cameron. I like to see what he does, even if it's, like, weird. Uh, Tim Miller, I'm excited to see more work from him. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, I also just – I like Terminator the way it is. Like, I, it's kind of fine. It's okay. I don't, we, need, we don't need more of them. Yeah, like, that's the thing. What is like, it going to do? You it's, know? It's, I don't feel like – I, I, this is not like an episode seven, episode eight Star Wars thing where they're continuing the story. This is a story that has been so bogged down and convoluted and looped back on mm -hmm. itself that I'm ready to get away from it. Uh, but that being said, James Cameron knows what he's doing, so uh, let's let's see what he can do. Yeah. 
Um, so the hottest thing in Japan right now, according to a very quick Google search, is this chair. Let's take a look. That's the one right there. It's, yep. a, it's a gaming chair that looks like a... Uh, it looks like when A.C. Slater sits backwards on a, a toilet. Yeah, or some kind of weird seahorse. An upper decker reverse Some kind of... Don't say that on this show. That's <laughs> terrible. Anyway, uh, so, what's the story here? So two million of these chairs have been sold in Japan. They are called basically uh, gamer chairs. I thought they are called uh, Buddy the Game Chair. They are called Buddy the Game Chair. Uh, as you can see in some of these pictures, they don't really look like a chair. It almost looks like a stiletto that someone they drove over like with a truck. They look like a delicious sex food. Yeah, or like the squid from Splatoon tried to like yeah. escape or melt. Apparently those are hot colors there right now. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, yeah, they, they, they're, they're allegedly like really good for your posture. Uh, if we look at some of these other pictures, you can see that uh, your spine, the way you sit in your classic gaming bean bag on your floor right now, which I'm sure very few of you actually do, yeah. uh, it's, not, it's not a good way to sit. What you want to do with your spine is you want to turn it into a weird reverse bow and arrow. And then just squanch all over this thing. Just put your, okay. your pelvic thrust right into the back I of it. I bet that that would smell bad after a minute. Yeah. Uh, also worth noting that a lot of these people are either playing TVs that are in the wrong directions from them, off, or How? hooked up to PS2s. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this photo on the left here I want to I want to kind of discuss. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the PS2, the first like the first gen PS2, uh, and the gigantic like like tabloid letter sized <laughs> DVD player, mm -hmm. uh, what's up with those two CDs? Like are they, are, they, yeah. are they trying to like sell them? Well, Japanese culture is very minimalist. What do so people buy like two CDs and that's it? That's it. You just pick your two favorite albums. All uh, right. So I mean, the theory here is that there are a lot of people in Japan who live in obviously smaller apartments, smaller homes, and what they try to do is get closer to the television, which might explain why the NES Classic had a three-foot cord. Sure. Uh, so this will actually get you right up into the action, uh, very very close, and you can drape your arms or you know. Man boobs over the front of these uh, big honkers on the side. What, but what if I want to arrange my uh, buddy the gaming chairs in a little circle and make them look like a bunch of fish that don't want to talk to each other? You like, can do that as well. Like look like yeah, I the, can. the fish farting it's circle. It's good to know that finally a gaming chair can also be used for other types of activities such as reading one of two different magazines. Yep, so that's Buddy the Gaming Chair. Uh, you How can much is buy them right game? now. They go for around $100. Uh, you can get more that have like extra padding or speakers or what? all sorts of things. So. Um, yeah, that, that'll actually boost the price up even more. I don't yeah, think that, I want one of these chairs, yeah, but I do like the tagline. Do you not sit down on a good chair of the comfort? Good question, buddy. Uh, yeah, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm not going to buy one, you're not going to buy one, but maybe you want one at home. You can get it. $100. Yeah. Make that happen. What a terrible story. Max, anyway, they're, they're rebooting another, <laughs> another classic fabled franchise, which is one of those things that, like, I think that the older you get, you can either get madder and madder about this, or you can get more and more okay with the fact that no yeah. idea is original and new things uh, aren't as easy to make as old things. Yeah, the coolest thing about getting really far away from source material is the further you get away from it, the less people who would care about it are alive or coherent. Yeah. Uh, the good news is all of the original hardcore fans of the King Arthur franchise died thousands of years ago. So they're not upset about the fact that Guy Ritchie is making a King Arthur movie. It's called uh, King Arthur, The Legend of the Sword. It comes out May 12th. It's got uh, Charlie Hunnam from Sons of Anarchy and Pacific Rim. It's got Jude Law from uh, you know, AI, the robot kissing movie. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw a trailer for this a while ago. I think they put one out at Comic-Con. And I looked at it and I like got bored watching it um, because it didn't look exciting. They put out a new trailer recently can't even tell which one this is, but I think this is the new one. But basically, he's kind of doing with King Arthur what he did with Sherlock Holmes, which is kind of give it like a, a bit of edgy flair, like kind of applying modern filmmaking techniques and making it more action-y. They got some GoPro, they got some CG animals. They got but Robocop. What, yeah, they got Robocops. But what really caught me about this is it kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy XV. Oh, wow. In that Final Fantasy XV is like, you got a bunch of like, you got a bunch of bros with cell phones and they're still called like Kingsguard and they've got like swords and magic and stuff, but... They're like cruising around in a car, and they're like, you know, they have they have modern sensibilities. And this doesn't have people in a car, but it does have kind of, like that dude's wearing basically a, a medieval bomber jacket. Yep. Uh, and there's like weird rewinds and cuts, and they also have giant like monster skeletons. And then like, uh, these guys look like uh, Final Fantasy bad guys, and I'm kind of excited on that front. Um, another movie I was thinking about a lot when I was playing Final Fantasy was. <laughs> Uh, uh, Romeo plus Juliet, the uh, right. the Baz Luhrmann one with Leonardo DiCaprio, which is like not really good Shakespeare, but really interesting aesthetically. Sure. Uh, and I'm always I'm always very fussy about kind of intentionally anachronistic, uh, you know, fantasy. 
Like if 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 people in Game of Thrones said like bro, I'd be like, don't say that. Or right. they're like, hold on, let me just let me just check my IMs or something. You'd be like, that's that. I think I think it's smart that you mentioned Game of Thrones because I feel like this this is Game of Thrones has now opened the door for movies like this. And yeah. we got movies like this in the '90s and the 2000s, like stuff like A Knight's Tale, but sure. no one went to go see it. They were not great films. But I think that something like this has a bigger chance. Like this looks like something that HBO would put together for Game of Thrones. I could actually take scenes from this and show them to you, and I'd be like, I think yeah. that was a guy from Game of Thrones. No, I think this even goes way further yeah. than that. Like Game of Thrones is still like the the source material has its you know active vocal fan base. But yeah. King Arthur at this point is royalty free. They can do whatever the hell they want with it. Well, yeah, that's exactly why I think people, studios are starting to mine through sort of yeah. classic fantasy like this and seeing what can resonate with a sort of Game of Thrones audience. They resonate with video gamers, which I think that uh, Guy Ritchie does a really good job of. Yeah, he makes um, he makes a really odd kind of action movie. He's also one of those directors who doesn't like he doesn't need a huge budget, mm -hmm. but when he has one, it's interesting. Even that, uh, like that shot of like uh, Charlie Hunnam like running sideways, making that weird like gritty face, and it's yeah. like a shaky cam. Yeah. It's very like crank. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Like, it's like a uh, which isn't movie. really what you think of when you think of King Arthur. No, uh, but no. I mean King Arthur can be interpreted in many ways. I mean, like that's kind of funny to think about. Is is Tolkien, who made Lord of the Rings, is like long dead was a Oxford scholar of King Arthur. Like he was a researcher of Arthurian legends. So. If he was still around and he wasn't already mad about the fact that Shadow of Mordor was a video game, he'd probably be mad about the fact that they're giving, uh, you know, the guy who made Snatch, uh, King Arthur, to screw around with. Yeah. So, uh, but that said, like, I'm really, I'm, I went from being like completely just blasé about this to really excited. Yeah, me too. Uh, Isn't it that might weird? Be incoherent, but maybe I don't know. Maybe I just have brain damage from you know 40 hours of Final Fantasy or whatever. I feel like trailers are a lot like like you you'll see one for one movie and it won't resonate with you at all. Yeah. And they'll recut it and put it out with a different song and new footage and it completely changes. It's sort of like the difference between like a pizza and a calzone. It's the same ingredients, yeah. but they're just organized. And then, and then you see the movie and it's a hot trash trash mess. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. Sometimes a picture of a pizza is better than the pizza itself. God, I miss pizza. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. It's all right. Um, okay, so neither one of us plays Overwatch, which makes us very much in the minority because that's like the hottest game in the world right now. Yeah, IGN's, IGN's game of the year, 2016. Yeah. You and I were sitting there being um, like, well, I yeah. kind of disagree. <laughs> um, but yeah, that said, we don't dislike Overwatch. Yeah, I, think, I think Overwatch is probably aesthetically my favorite Blizzard game. It looks like uh, just a wonderful cartoon show I would totally watch. Yep. Uh, I keep needing to jump into it and screw around. I know that I'll probably get yelled at by people who are much better at it than me. I know like probably half of the roster's names. Uh, I like that the characters are characters. I like that they're, they feel very much like toys, uh, which led me kind of being like, oh, wh why aren't there toys? Uh, the international toy fairs around the corner, and obviously that's when a bunch of prototypes of action figures and whatnot get unveiled. Uh, and in, in kind of ahead of that, uh, I believe at the UK toy fair, uh, Funko, who makes those little Funko Pop bobbleheads, uh, showed off some Overwatch Funko Pops, which are, they're fine. They look exactly like you'd imagine. Uh, let's take a look right here. Yeah, uh, I think one of the impressive things they're doing here is with scale. Uh, yeah. So there's, the Funko Pops are sort of, they're, I mean, I'll put it this way, they're very hit or miss for me. Um, I think, and I've said this before, uh, the less human they look, the better they sort of turn out. Like, I love their Tauntauns more than I love their, you know, just like, got, you know, Rick from The Walking Dead, sure. for example. But uh, yeah, we're getting to see some more here. Obviously, highly detailed, very colorful. They're going with that bright, fun, poppy, neon aesthetic that yeah. the game is so known for. But they're still not action figures. Yeah, like give me, like figures. I want the accessories. Like all, like Overwatch figures, I feel like are kind of designed the way toys used to be in the '90s, which mm -hmm. almost kind of just is what makes it click for me. Like there's a gorilla who wears glasses, and there's a I, what, is there a mummy yet? I don't think there's a mummy. There's a guy who transforms into a, into a turret. Like there's all these like you know there's a lady who's got wings who shoots you know shoots lasers or whatever. Yep. Uh, and I think they're 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 so ripe to make action figures of. And obviously everybody every one of those characters. That's somebody's favorite character. Like, yeah. there's no, like, there's characters everyone's like, oh, God, this guy again. I forget his name. That one guy. You know the one. That Overwatch character who you yeah. hate. What's his face? That one. Anyway, so, or her. But, like, I feel like we're we're in a weird area with when it comes to action figures these days. Yeah. We're, we're getting a ton of Funko Pops, which are cool if you like them. Um, Amiibo and, and, and Skylanders and stuff like that. Sort of, like, stagnant, little statuette, smaller scale things. Not yeah. really articulate. But like, give and me then a... you're seeing some, like, kind of more high-quality stuff that goes in, like, the $20, $30 range and stuff like that. 
but um, we're not really getting a lot of just yeah, like. Just give me an action figure of like, yeah. give me like a like a, a give me Diva, you know, like, yep. and then she comes with a mech that get the special box set version that's got the whole robot to go into. Yeah, comes with like a bag of Doritos or whatever. Um, but yeah, like uh, I think we might be seeing some. Uh, Blizzard in the past has partnered with NECA, who makes fantastic action figures. It wouldn't surprise me one bit to see like really gorgeous uh, Overwatch figures coming out of Toy Fair this year. Yep. But in the meantime, we got Funko Pops. Uh, I mean, maybe when they start making action figures, I'll need to sort of justify wanting to buy those action figures by actually playing the game. Yeah. And then I'll, then I'll get into it. Yeah. That's how that goes. So we'll see. Uh, fingers crossed for uh, Overwatch action figures. I think it'll happen. Yeah. Um, One of these days. Max, we only have a minute or two left, uh, and I realize that you and I, uh, on no shows this week or anything, we didn't really talk about the title of the new Star Wars movie. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, how do you yeah. feel about it? It's all right. Uh, yeah. The only problem with The Last Jedi as a title is that for, what, 31 years now, mm -hmm. we've been referring to... Return of the Jedi is Jedi. Yeah. Oh, all Jedi had was a bunch of Muppets. Oh, yeah. I watched Jedi this weekend. Oh, you want to you want to get real hammered and watch Jedi and look at yep. those funny Muppets? These are things that we say. The second that you add another Star Wars movie that has Jedi in the title, you're like, wait, wait, wait. Return of the Jedi or The Last Jedi? Yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. It's like if you had another movie that had the word Sith in the title, right? Yeah. Um, no one says Sith, though. That's kind of weird. I so guess actually, kind of I was thinking mm -hmm. about this. The, the Star Wars movies where they say the name of the movie... In the movie, so it happened in in Rogue One, where uh, maybe we are the Rogue One. Aren't we the Rogue One? Uh, I feel like in the Last Jedi, they're going to say the name of the movie, The Last Jedi. Yeah. Like they never say in A New Hope. Wow, what a New Hope this is. That's true. Or, it looks like the Empire Strikes Back again. Yeah. Or this is really, this really is the Return of the Jedi. Yep. Or the Revenge of the Sith. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's never happened. So I I think in the Last Jedi they're going to say the name of the movie, The Last Jedi. Yeah. And that'll be a pattern all the way up until this truly is a Han Solo origin story <laughs> anthology film. <laughs> uh, on that anyway, note, we got yeah, to, uh, thank you guys so much yeah. for watching. Um, we do the show every week, so tune in if you enjoyed it. If you hated it, I'm sorry. Let us know in the comments, and yeah. we'll have bad days reading those. Uh, but hey, if you like something on the internet, tell people. Yeah, leave a nice comment. Show it with your friends. Share it with your friends, and tell the people who make the thing. Little like the thing. Up. And, that um, coming up next, uh, what do we got? Is there anything happening? Nothing no, going on. But coming up next, today. you can take a one-hour-long bathroom break. But be back here in an hour because we got people playing For Honor. No, that's that's two hours. Two you hours? Can, you can actually go in. I don't care. I'm leaving. You can go two full hours. Great job, Max. Three o'clock today, you big idiot. Uh, we're playing For Honor right here, For Honor, in the studio. Uh, I'll be on that. I'll be hosting that. I'm playing as a Viking versus a Samurai and a Knight. That game actually turned out to be really, really fun. Did you break our microphone? Yeah. You idiot. Is it working? No. Probably not. No. Anyway, I mean, I don't know. Well, see ya. <laughs> Thanks for watching. What's up, guys? It's me, Brian Altano. This is Max Scoville. Yeah. It's and been a, oh, it's, boy. It's been a big week for games. Some of the biggest, most anticipated games of the year have come out this week. And yep. one of them that maybe came out this week or last week or who cares, really, is uh, Skylight. Skylight Free Range 2.